what am I going to remember most about Jay Gruden? When I look back, you know, hopefully I'm still alive. When I look back on this five years from now, you know, I, I have things I remember about, you know, the Shanahan era, uh, you know, sort of a, the, the explosion of RG3 and the, 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 um, the debacle with uh, Albert Hainsworth. Uh, you know, there's sort of seminal moments I remember, how things all went bad um, at the end, all the infighting. Remember all the stories that were leaking, like right before the Sunday pregame shows oh, yeah. with, with, oh, yeah. with, with uh, Shanny? Oh, yeah. Um, we loved it. All the drama. It was great sports radio. With, with, with Jay, it's a little <clears throat> different. Um, for me, the number one, and again, if you want to chime in, 800-636-1067, we'll, we'll, we'll sneak in some. For me, number one, I think it's probably just his inability to settle on a quarterback, to be honest with you. Um, you know, he came in there, he kind of inherited Robert when he was basically broken. Yeah, didn't love Robert. I'll never forget, though, when he first got the job and he was asked about it. Remember, he said, well, it's going to be like, like playing you know, like a video game guy, like playing Matt, you know what I mean? Like, this guy's got all the tools. I can't wait to work with him. Soured on him pretty quickly. But then he didn't love Kirk either. There was something about he Kirk's Colt. personality. It mm-hmm. was in a really bizarre way, you know, throughout that tenure of that, that triumvirate. Reportedly, behind the scenes, more of a Colt guy. Mm-hmm. Colt was a guy, truly, if you put a gun to his head, he wanted to win that job. But to Kirk's credit, Kirk went out there and won it and played well, and there was nothing really Jay could do. Um, but sort of that inability to settle on a quarterback, which I think ultimately doomed him here uh, because, you know, they never committed to Kirk. You know, he was first asking for longer-term deals. They just thought it was preposterous. That you know anybody would maybe pay him sixteen or twenty million dollars a year or whatever for a, a, a you know significant number of years. So they 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 pissed him off to the point that they had to move on from him. And, and I then think they, Jay, by the way, had as much to say about that. I'm sure as Bruce and Dan. Big did. factor in it. I think Jay was never sold Jay was, on Kirk. He was never a Kirk guy and never really wanted to hitch his wagon to him. So was willing then to make a the trade. The fateful trade for Alex Smith, who God bless him, doesn't look like he's going to be able to come back from this. I mean, hopefully we're all wrong and he can. Um, and even if he does, certainly wasn't performing at a level that would inspire anybody. Um, and then now you're just in a road where they bring in Sanchez. It's going to be sort of a mockery. You know, Josh Johnson, God love him. Uh, hopefully he can play well here these last few games. But, you know, you're talking about a guy who hadn't thrown a pass in the league before last week until 2011. Yeah, 2011. So, yeah. I mean, the odds are stacked against him big time. Uh, so I just think the quarterback situation, that sort of unrest, inability to settle on one, find one that he can ride out, I think ultimately is what – going to doom him um yeah. but the thing that kind of you know and you prepared this i didn't prepare it i was just kind of thinking about things in the morning uh, when i saw your email but mm-hmm. just how unprepared the team always looked in key moments well that was my next one yeah and time management the especially let- do you remember the 2015 game in, in philly when kirk took the knee they were yeah. up 16 to 10 right right I mean, on, on, right before halftime right before halftime yeah. in philly and you know it's 16 to 10 and instead of clocking it, he took the knee and ran out the clock instead of kicking a field goal or yeah, trying to run yeah, one, yeah, one yeah, more yeah. play. Yeah. And I don't know what happened there, but, you know, Jay ended up kind of really backing Kirk and said, hey, you know, it's fine. He made mm-hmm. a mistake. I think they still won the game. But just it just seemed like it was just an unorganized group all it, the time, always. especially in key moments. And, they also, and that always comes back to the coach. And they always seem to let us down during Jay's tenure on national TV. Big Monday night football games on Sunday night games. I mean, there are the exceptions. You know, there was the Thanksgiving win there a few years ago. Um, The Monday night game that Colt did win uh, in Dallas, right? So there have been a few exceptions. But for the most part, when the team really needed a big performance or when you felt like, okay, this is going to be a game here they're going to win or whatever, you need this for this playoff push down the stretch, they, they would come up just shockingly empty, uninspired. And that's another thing. And I've talked about it for years. His perplexed, sort of befuddled, exasperated look on the sidelines. Mm. Uh, it's just, I will never forget it. Like, he was just, could not believe what he was seeing, which I believe. <laughs> and he did not know how to change it. There was it. nothing he could do. There was nothing he could do. That, so that crumpled play sheet that he had the first few years there, um, j- it just looked like a big mess on the side. He did not look like a guy commanding respect. That's, I, didn't, I, I just never felt that. And I, I like him so much personally. I love, I'll love. i always remember his press conferences. Yeah. You know, we're almost acting like he's dead. That's I'm just, assuming he's going to get fired. That's I really just am. His, that's just the personality. 
the the botch cliches, the stumbling stumbling over his words. You know, when he first came here, what was kind of nice about him is he wouldn't he wouldn't hold his tongue. Remember when he just lit RG three on fire when Robert kind of threw his own guys under the bus? Remember and said, "Well, uh, you know, I don't have uh, Aaron Rodgers' offensive line or whatever. I don't have mm-hmm. the same weapons." Yep. And then Jay lit him up and said, "You know, Robert's taking three steps when it should be five steps. He's taking five steps when it should be seven steps. He's looking left when he should be looking right." Remember, he just lit him on fire. He used to be really, really honest in those things. I think a lot of that, I think now he's more he's into cliches. He's backed off. He's not nearly as open as he once was. Um, and he's gotten a lot more defensive. Uh, he was really defensive this week when Tom Lavero um, you well, know, you know asked what? him. You and I would be defensive too. Yeah, probably. If we were asked these same questions, yeah, probably. we'd come out and say, dude, I've got every guy on my offense on IR. Yeah, you I, know? Know. I mean, right. we'd be, we would probably handle those press conferences just like he's handling yeah, them. Yeah, probably. I, and I like him personally. And I think the other thing I'll remember is just his inability, beyond his inability to settle on a quarterback, his inability to fix the defense. Because he had moments where he could move the chains, you know, where Kirk Cousins put up some big years. Um, they never had overwhelming tar- you know, talent out there. Um, but they were able to, to put up some points and, and, and move the chains offensively. But they mowed through D coordinators. They had Hazlitt. They had Joe Barry. Minuski's not going to survive this. There's no way Minuski comes back. Um, so, I don't know. Those are the things and, that come to my mind yeah, when I look back on this guy. tenure. 